Hello and welcome to Switzer Investing TV. I'm Peter Switzer. Thanks for joining us. On tonight's program, I've got June Bay Lu of Tribeca Alpha Plus, and she's uh, done me a favour. She's gone looking for five small and mid cap stocks that should do well in 2024. I think, well, I think interest rates are going to be cut in. Uh, 2024. That would be great for small and mid-cap companies. So her picks are really interesting ones and we'll get to them in a moment. And then Mike Gable of Fenmont Equity is going to look at the 11 stocks and the charts that go with them that he thinks have a lot of potential in 2024. Now Mike's uh, part of the program is only going to be for those people who are subscribers to the Switzer Report. The first part is open for everybody but if you want to see the whole program you are going to have to be a subscriber to the Switzer Report. So without any further ado, let's go to June Bay Lu of Tribeca Alpha Plus. Well, thanks for joining us, June Bay Lu. Uh, thanks for having me. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. And it'll be a happy new year if 2024 is good for the stock market. Now we know you're not necessarily a negative person, I can't even remember any time you've been negative, but what's 2024 going to look like for you, do you think? Look, uh, it's going to be positive. Look, you're right, um, but we're right most of the time, haven't we? Um, yes. Look, you know, 2023, people talk about 2023. There was war of worry. We had recession, all these things that people worry about to, to happen, but it didn't. And the share market delivered over 12%. Um, hmm. You know, incredible return total return um and uh, you know i think 2024 will be more or less the same you know people still worry about the inflation the interest rate and the like and look honestly i think we everything's heading the right direction uh compared to 12 months ago we have a lot more certainty about where the interest rate might be and um you know if anything there'd be potential for rate cut towards the end of the year um and we know consumer will be a little bit tough but we just heard from many con consumer company already things haven't been like a collapse as everyone predicted so you know the economy is uh, you know sort of moving along to sort of quite okay and mm. we've got iron ore prices at very good prices so mm. you know so a lot of things are going for the share market and i think this year we do hope that investors um, sort of fear and hesitation will be alleviated and will take advantage of the opportunity now we're at the beginning of the year yeah now just for people who don't know your fund, the Tribeca Alpha Plus fund, how would you describe it? Look, my fund is a longshore fund. So I invest in the ASX, um, you know, as Australian companies, um, majority focus on the ASX 200, but I can go into the smaller companies when I see opportunities rise. Um, and uh, it's, it's actually a really great um, sort of uh, fund in this market condition because we can do long short. So, you know, when we see there's a bit of risk or something becoming too expensive or sector become too expensive, we can actually start building short in those space. Um, mm. But then, you know, once we uh, generate return and when we, once we think, um, you know, valuation is reasonable, then we move on to something else. So mm. it's a great way to have exposure to the Australian share market without all these additional risk and volatility. Yeah. Now, I've, I've been arguing for some time that when uh, interest rates are likely to fall. A lot of tech companies that have been really harshly treated by the market would be re-loved. And we've, we've seen that in America. And we've seen some of our good stocks here. And also, my, my belief is that small cap companies that have been smashed and ignored will eventually get re-loved and bought this year. Do, do you see that work? Do you, do you think I'm right on that subject? Oh, I think you're absolutely right. And uh, we should begin to... I know to... I like you, June Bay Lou. You, <laughs> you, you see the, the better parts of my argument, but go on. Well, we think alike. Look, yes, I think, we do. Uh, if you look at the small cap um, performers, um, they really underperform the large cap names and particularly across the tech space, um, even though they may be delivering higher um, higher growth. It's partly because, you know, market was in that uncertain period thinking there might be recession. So no one really want to take on the risk of going to small cap because normally those companies are early stage companies, um, you know, in the recession is pretty tough for those businesses. Um, but now that we do think the recession worry is gone, we're just looking at a slowdown 
And this seems like the best outcome for a lot of those businesses. And, uh, you know, relatively, they look a lot more attractive. So, you know, they, they, there's a couple of names we're looking at, you know, their performances towards the end of the year. You know, they kind of just let get left behind. And, uh, you know, this year, um, I do think they will outperform the large cap, particularly mm. in the tech, in the few other uh, sectors um, by a long way. Okay, so because I'm a very demanding type, I did ask you to come up with five small to mid cap companies. I'm not going to hold you to the number, but let's run through some of the, the, the small to mid cap companies that you think could have a good 2024. Look, absolutely. So the first one we really like um, is Life360. Um, it is a company that provides essentially, um, you know, tracking uh, across the uh, whole entire, you know, family system, ecosystem. Um, and it's doing really well in the US. And if anything, you know, it's actually been doing, becoming a much stronger company in the last 12 months. Um, and now it is one of the top five um, most actively used social media app um, uh, over in the US. And it's doing really well. And then it's on track to, um, you know, become very profitable. Um, the, the the part of the reason of the share price um, is uh, is sort of lagging behind because it's small. Um, it's kind of not sitting with the, your your wise tech or your you know other uh, large businesses. Um, and uh, but my view is that once you're gaining the um, regain sort of investor sort of uh, um, you know wanting to have exposure to a smaller cap, this is one of the first one will be bid up uh, will be bought, um, mm -hmm. and it's looking very cheap relative to its uh, comparables over in the US. Yeah, and I, I guess the, as families become excessively more busy, uh, something that tracks what's going on with their kids and their, their life is really important. I think Mark Zuckerberg's sister is on, on the board of this company, or she was at one stage. That's right. It's it's actually got a very impressive board and impressive management. So, um, and it's ticking boxes everywhere. Um, and then we at the moment only really just talking about the US market and oh. here, but and they just about well actually they launched it in the UK, but that's just a little bit behind as well. Uh, in terms of uh, you know just behind a few years behind the where they are at, with the US. So oh. incredible business, and we expect that growth to pick up quite quickly. Uh, in, even in other markets, and they're about to launch elsewhere. So you know it's a very fast growing. business business and yeah. um, you know, it's actually all being favored to many by many small cap investors and you know you really just need to need, need the market condition to turn for these businesses yeah. to develop. okay that's live 360 what's your next one Look, the next one we really like in um, in the sort of space is that, you know, we like GQG. Um, it's uh, it's a fund manager. It's, uh, you know, I know I know it's a little bit weird for me to recommend a fund manager, um, but, you know, we invest across the board and we do think this company has really good uh, momentum. Um, you know, the time to buy fund managers when you ha they have good performance, when they have very strong flow numbers. And this company has done incredible flow, flow numbers uh, when uh, many other listed fund managers had done very very poorly in the and, last and jim Bailey, what, what is the company name I, I just didn't pick it up oh gqg it's uh it's a fund manager that has now um i think uh, over 12 billion dollars funds under management right. um and um yeah so it's really only just start well it's uh, it's listed maybe three four years ago um mm. it's done very well well it's uh it's done very well in terms of performance in terms of share um you know farm flow um, but um, but the thing is, because it's in that smaller end and, uh, you know, just taking time for it to gather um, momentum and, you know, and then if you look at the performance and the flow it has been incredibly strong um, mm. and it's sort of just, you know, lost, um, uh, haven't been picked up, noticed by a lot of investors, larger cap mm. investors, because mm. it's too small. Um, and as you can see, there has been a lot of uh, M&A in the fund, funds management space. Um, you know, we think this one this certainly looks um, very, very, uh, with very good uh, attractive valuation. Okay. And, and what's a sweet spot? What, what is it investing in that, in a sense, gives it a competitive advantage? Look, what's incredible, it's a global business. So um, it's just incredible amount of uh, flow and it seems to outperform across many different market conditions. And that is quite uh, quite incredible. You know, mm -hmm. normally we think it's a growth market, it's a value market. You invest in, across different managers. Um, and that business, um, a little bit like my fund, you know, you just want to make money. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, it's... Funny and that. That, yeah, that's right. And that, that's, you know, that's kind of, it's a good place for, um, you know, for investor to be rather than trying to pick which style will work. Okay. Here's another one. 
Okay, another one is a little bit, um, you know, a little bit, um, you know, off the uh, off the um, side. Is, uh, yeah, that's right. Well, it's actually not. Oh, it kind of has been like Lega for a little bit, um, but you know, we really like uh, we really like uh, Mermaid Marine. Um, not really Lega. It's done really well <laughs> more recently. Um, you know, it's uh, it's very cheap. It's it's one of those cyclicals that you know. Has a lot of pro had a lot of problems years and years and years ago um, when you know you probably heard of it um, for for many years that uh, it was uh, servicing those um, you know uh, they have those boat, boats specialized boats to service those uh, oil rigs and the like and mm. um, you know and a few many many years ago there's been this huge oversupply of boats um, and uh, so the you know pricing collapsed and the like but um, you know that overall industry condition has completely turned um and really you know now you're seeing this tightness in terms of uh, supply um of you know boats and they control some of the uh, most effect efficient and be best ones um and um you know market is still reasonably fragmented and then they are now getting very good pricing environment um we think it's uh, with its price uh, market environment as well as um you know how cheap it is i do think it's uh, it's going to do pretty well it's one of those value stock that you will have in the portfolio okay now i've got three uh did you actually find five for me yeah look uh, we have a couple of other ones um yeah. they um <laughs> we'll have a couple of other ones um uh the, there's this company um jlg i think i mentioned to you before um uh, so this is the um the company that service and maintenance for um for for insurance companies mm. um it's john's lane uh john's lane uh, uh group and uh, this company has, um, you know, has been around for over 60 years here in Australia, gone to the US a few years ago and, um, you know, and has uh, most of its uh, work is sort of secured, um, you know, with a very predictable pipeline for many years to come. And it has largest insurers, pretty much all the insurers here in Australia to call upon its service when there's a, you know, whether it's a natural disaster or whether it's um, just normal maintenance when, you know, something breaks mm. down, they go up and fix it. Um, and, um, you know, right now, I think it's, uh, you know, with the rain and the flood that is happening, well, rain and flood, we had the turn in the weather. Um, it certainly looks like this company is well leveraged again um, to some of those catastrophe work as well. Um, you know, it's not a cheap small cap, but it is a company that we often feel, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a structural growth businesses now that it's going to the US um, and the market share, you know, market uh, over there, addressable market is enormous. And at meanwhile, you know, you've got all these, uh, uh, all these uh, weather that's uh, that's turning against everyone yeah. else, kind of benefit mm. this. Okay, they're four fantastic ones. Did you get a fifth one, or am I am I pushing you too far? Yeah, look, um, let me let me just have a look at my where 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 I stand. Look, I think, um, look, let's keep it at four. <laughs> let's okay, keep it, now you've done fantastically well. Yeah, yeah. But what, yeah. I, what I want to do before we wrap up, because some, because they're not well known. So the first one was Life 360, right? Mm, the yes. second one was. Uh, so Life 360, uh, and then we've got Mama Marine. Uh, we've yeah. got. So, so, now, what's the ticket code for that one? MRM. MRM, right? Next one. Uh, and then we've got the JLG. Yeah, JLG. Yep. Uh, and then we've got. Uh, what was the other one we talked about? <laughs> Uh, we got the JLG. We got the. Um... It was the the fund manager. Oh, that that's a G, uh, GQG. That was a GQG. GQG. That's right. Right, GQG. That's right. Okay, we got I that. I do have a fifth one. Uh, Good. I think you should put I'm this glad one I pushed down. you. Yeah, that, look, this one you should put it down. Um, it it is a volatile business, um, but I think it's a winner. Uh, at the code is N E U. Um, it's N a N. What is it? N E E U. N E U. That's right. It's actually now one of the largest company in the small ort. Uh, it is a biotech. Um, it has been, it's one of those companies that's, um, you know, very pragmatic in uh, commercializing its products. Um, right. And, um, you know, and recently has had a couple really good wins. Um, you know, you probably know about Telex where, you know, they've done very well in commercializing their portfolio rather than trying to go along and, and the like and trying to, you know, win 
the world by themselves, which costs yeah. a lot of money. This company is being very pragmatic and they've done very well in uh, more recently. And, um, you know, with what they have in the pipeline, I think there's a lot more to come. So, you know, it's something absolutely worth, um, you know, just be patiently waiting um, for, um, you know, perhaps for a volatile day because ShipRite recently has had it because they had good data reads has gone very far. But we do think this is something you should have in your portfolio. Great stuff. Well, thanks for joining us and thanks for working hard to get five stocks. Thank you very much. So let's just recap on the five stocks that June Bay Lou talked about. And that was Life360, uh, a fund manager called GQG, that's the ticker code. A marine business called MRM, that's the ticker code there. There's J or G, that's the business that cashes in or benefits from doing the repair work in the insurance um, uh, problems out there nowadays. And finally, the biotech company has a ticker code NEU. And that was June Bay Lu of Tribeca Alpha Plus. Now, if you want to see the next part of the show, you are going to have to be a subscriber and you'll see Mike Gable of Fairmont Equities look at the charts and 11 stocks that he thinks have a lot of potential or not. Some don't have great potential, but most do for 2024. Let's now go to Mike Gable. And that's the show for today. Thanks for joining us. Remember, if you want to get the full show going forward, you will have to be a subscriber to The Switzer Report. Just go to switzerreport.com.au and I hope you do become a subscriber. <laughs>